My name is Charles Sterling. I'm a senior program manager on the Visual Studio team, and I'm excited that at Connect, we're releasing a browser-based exploratory testing tool. Here at Microsoft, we've always had great test case management tools inside a Visual Studio team system. Today, we're actually extending that with an exploratory testing tool so you can integrate that in your development environments. This tool makes it easy for you to annotate and validate the value that you're shipping in your product backlog items. It makes it very, very easy for you to file bugs. It's simple to get started. It's simple to acquire. It works in your environments, whether they are Mac, Linux, or Windows, and also works across your devices. Again, working with Android, iPad, iPhone, and Windows Phone. It's resilient. So if you happen to crash your browser in one of these instances while you're doing exploratory testing, when you bring it back up, we're going to remember where you were and be able to let you continue on from there. So what is in this brand new tool? This tool is going to let you capture notes, making sure that you're actually um, delivering the value as you think it is, or actually just notes about what you want to do going forward. We make it easy for you to capture screenshots and annotate those screenshots. Now, whether or not you do the annotation in our tool or your own tool is up to you. As I mentioned earlier, it's very simple to file bugs, and these are fairly rich bugs. We actually collect information about the environment in which the bug was filed. All of this occurs in a timeline, so if you actually span different PBIs, we'll actually put that in a single timeline so you can actually see where that occurred. And as I mentioned, it enables you to actually test it across your mobile device. So I'd love to show this to you as a demo. We have got great test tools for formal testing and, and test case management. If you haven't looked at them, please do. Um, but this is about exploratory testing and making it integral to the rest of the development cycle. I wanted to show you how you access it. Um, to make it very easy to acquire, you can download the exploratory testing tool from the new marketplace. So if you haven't taken a look at it, please do, if for no other reason, just to get the new exploratory testing. Um, I said make it integral to your development environment or development process. What am I talking about? You can see I'm actually looking at my backlog right here, and I've actually, we're working with Corey Fowler, we said that we're going to add categories to that sample. And we've done that, and I actually want to go ahead and create an um, exploratory test for it. So I'm going to go ahead, open up the Parts Unlimited sample, and click on that exploratory um, test tool. And right off the bat, it's asking me which Visual Studio team service should I be using? So I type in Parts Unlimited. I think I've fumbled finger this. So let's see if we can fix this. And right off the bat, it knows about my um, projects that I'm actually working on. And I've been doing this with Corey Fowler. So I'm going to go ahead and reference the Corey team. Now, in looking at it, it looks awesome. The team's done an amazing job, but I can see that we've actually got an issue with the price of the red wheel. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start that session. And I'm going to capture a picture of this red wheel. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a pointer to it and say something like wheel price, uh, wheel price is wrong. Um, you know, if this was actually, um, you know, private information, I could go ahead and block, you know, and, and blur that information as well. And this is included in a timeline, so I could capture multiple, multiple images, and it's all part of that timeline. You can see the timeline is taking me forward in time. Now, I mentioned that I can not only test my Windows environment, but I can test my devices. So I'm going to go ahead and file a bug for that wheel, and I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it in my device. So I'm going to do both things. Um, first thing is I see that my wheel is here, and I can probably go ahead and add real text here. So please update wheel price. And price needs updated. And if I go back and take a look at that backlog where I was showing you that work, I would actually find this bug as part of the, part of my current sprint. Go ahead and save that. And it's just that easy. Now let's take a look at this exact same experience, but on a physical device. Working with um, our friends at Perfecto Mobile, working with our friends at Perfecto, we make it very, very easy 
for you, the developer, to take a look at your application running on physical devices. So I've entered in the credentials, letting me look at the Perfecto Mobile Cloud. And you can see that I actually have a bunch of different devices in the cloud that is available to me. I'm going to go ahead and enter in my iPad. And the iPad Air 2 is what Corey is playing with. So let's go ahead and take a look and make sure that we render OK on that device. Now, right off the bat, you can see that while we started our exploratory instance in tab one, or the, the tab to our immediate left of this one, we are actually going to maintain that state and run it and know what was happening before in that same timeline in the second tab. Um, that's pretty cool. So I can actually span instances and span tabs inside of my browser. Um, let's go ahead and, and start my Safari on this AirPad 2. With, oh, and it actually remembered from the last time I was looking at this that it remembered this page. So it looks pretty good. Um, I can see right off the bat, I do have an issue with the logo. Um, it, it occurs in both places, but I do need to file this as a bug as well. So let's go ahead and bring up the exploratory test extension and take an image of the logo. And I want to make sure and include the, the device crumbs. That way, the people that are looking at it know that, that I was actually in a device while I was um, capturing this particular bug. Um, it, yes, the metadata will be in the bug itself, but they will be able to have a visual cue of that um, in the picture itself. And as I mentioned, I did the annotation earlier in our tool. Um, I don't have to do that. So I could go ahead and, and not do the annotation here, file that bug, copy this out, Let's see if we can actually highlight that. Good. And like I said, I'm, I'm kind of old school, so I'm going to go ahead and paste it into my um, paintbrush. So we're going to go ahead and copy image, go into paintbrush, and I want the new logo. We, we, we have a new logo. I, I actually, I think I'm in charge of updating it. So we're going to go ahead and update logo. Okay, um, putting all of that back on the clipboard. We're gonna go back into my exploratory test extension and you can see that I have annotation from other tools. So it's not just our tool, it's the tool that actually fits the, um, your, your purposes and your workflow best. And this is a logo issue. Okay, now I mentioned the fact that um, this was resilient. So at this point, what happens if I crash? This application is still running, and it may not be the, the best citizen at, at this point. So let's go ahead and open up Task Manager, and we find I, our browser is running, and I'm going to go ahead and just bring it down. So at this point, did I lose everything? Let's find out. I'm going to go ahead and restart my browser, and I'm going to go ahead and um, reopen the test extension, and you'll see right off the bat that not only did I not lose my timeline, it actually remembered the bug exactly where I was at. So let's go ahead and finish the typing of the, the title. So logo bug um, in, what was that? That was a iPad Air 2, I believe is actually what, what, where we had problem, even though it occurs in all places. So at this point, um, the only thing left is to bring it full circle. So if I go ahead and let's look at Parts Unlimited, um, I want to show it back in the development environment. All those bugs are actually were brought back in, and we should be able to find those. So I'm going to open up my Cori parts. I'm going to go to work. And we should be able to see right off the bat, the, right off the bat in our my backlog, a logo bug as my last one. So right there, logo, logo bug in AirPad 2. Bringing exploratory testing all the way into your development cycle, making it fit for your devices, your operating systems, and your workflows. As you saw, we had a great demo. I know I actually had a lot of fun showing it to you. I just want to recap what you saw. We were able to um, capture screenshots. We were able to annotate those screenshots, both um, in the tool that we were delivering, and actually, in my case, Paintbrush. Um, we were able to capture those notes as we walked through it. Um, we filed a couple bugs, um, two I think, and also we put all of this in a timeline and it actually spanned a couple of my different PBIs. And we were able to do the exact same work across different devices, showing you how the resiliency, even though we had a crash in that case, was able to remember exactly where we were, 
and continue on going forward. My name is Charles Sterling. I hope you have a great time at Connect.